Welcome to my newest video, this one featuring how to make belt pockets using my personal method. My name is Silenus, and if you're new here, I play Amptguard. I am from the kingdom of Blackspire, and I play out of Satyr's Hollow. I have been sewing for about 20 years now, and just recently got a masterhood in the Order of Garber. Real quick there, uh, introduction. When I say that we're going to use my personal method, my method is really one that where I like to have a pop of accent or just a pop right in the middle. And so I'm going to bring up a slideshow real quick and so you can really uh, understand what I mean by that. And right there, those are my planes. I call them vanity stripe. So these are all solids even the vanity stripe. Right there you have a solid for the main, but a print for the vanity stripe. And there's some more. Uh, I have used ones where they, the whole pocket is, you know, uh, a print fabric. But generally speaking, I like to do a solid for the base and a print for the vanity stripe. So that's what we're gonna be doing here today. What you're going to need are two pieces of fabric that are 7 inches wide by 17 inches long. And that's going to make the body, the, whole, the overall body of your favor. Then we're going to need two strips of the same color as the 7 by 17 in 3 inches by 9 inches. So 3 inches wide nine inches long and then of that same fabric this will be the last piece in that same fabric you're going to go nine inches long by seven inches wide and then for your vanity stripe you're going to go three inches wide and nine inches long in something that you like so my general rule is to try and keep the fabrics the same consistency but if one fabric's just a little bit thinner than the other, that's okay. Just try to avoid things like mixing knits and wovens or felt and woven, felt and knit. Keep them all the same. So if your body is made out of, for example, I use Kona. I use Kona for the body. My vanity strip, because I like prints and they don't make Kona prints that I can find, I will use a regular quilting cotton because I love 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 the prints that you can find at Joann's or any quilting shop wherever you can find fabric I love getting the prints so again you're gonna need two pieces at 7 by 17 2 by 3 by 9 1 in 7 by 9 and 1 in 3 by 9 those are the pieces you're gonna need let's get into it because I don't want you to have to sit here and watch me sew an entire big full-size pocket, I'm actually going to be making it on a smaller scale. So we'll have a cute little pocket here at the end. And really what I do is I take my vanity stripe with the print side up. And that's important to know your directions, okay? So print facing you. And for your solid, it doesn't really matter. So unless you have a fabric where you can really tell the difference and how they wove the fabric on the front versus the back, for example, twill. Twill has those diagonal lines that you can really see, but on the back, it just looks like other fabric. Um, it doesn't really matter. So you're gonna take your print what you're going to do is you're going to lay a solid right on top, just like that. So line them up and just sew right down, right, right down. Sew them together. You're gonna couple stitches, do a little back stitch, and then you're gonna sew just like that. And then you're gonna pull it off. You're going to open it up and you're going to fold your seam allowance to the side of your solid. 
And if you like to iron, you go ahead and iron. I hate ironing, so I just finger press. And then what I like to do is that as soon as I am done sewing that piece on, I like to top stitch it. Now what you're going to do, it's going to reflect differently on mine, but I will actually set it up to reflect the same on yours. What you're going to do is you're going to line your presser foot up with this edge. So it'll be about quarter of an inch, give or take. You won't move the needle, okay? I have to move the needle because I'm working on a smaller scale. But if you keep the needle right center, you'll have your half inch marker on your, your sewing machine. And then when you line it up, it's roughly quarter inch. It doesn't have to be exact, so just kind of do it to the best of your ability. But what we're looking for is that when we are done, whoops, I've lost my thread. When we're done, we have a nice, clean edge that won't get what I call pillowy. So it won't, uh, it won't puff up. It'll stay nice and flat. So let's, let me try that again because I lost my thread. Um, wasn't holding down the right one. So again, line up your fabric with that edge. Hold down your thread so you don't lose it like I did. Backstitch a little. You don't have to backstitch on this because we're going to be adding another piece of fabric on top, and you'll see that in, in just a little bit. So just go ahead and follow your edge. Make sure your needle's up. Let's see. That's what I mean. You'll you'll pretend like this is to scale. Unfortunately, it's not because I don't want to try and figure that math out. But you've got you've you've sewn down your seam allowance so that it doesn't get puffy. This will always stay nice and flat because it's pulled and sewn. So that's just that's just so you don't have to iron it as much in the future. Okay, so now that we've got that side done, we've got to get the other side now. And to do that, you just, you know, lay your fabric on top, turn it around, and then because, unfortunately, I d don't adjust your needle like I am. I am doing this because I have to for the small scale. So you just, again, print side facing you. You want to be able to see that print. So you just lay your fabric uh, down your solid down and then repeat like we did on the other side first we're going to sew the two together just like this and it's always important to backstitch because you don't want to when you are manipulating this fabric you don't want it shifting and coming undone because that will affect the the, um, the finished look it, it might pull it might you know do weird things so just back stitch when you are adding one piece of fabric to another if you're not adding one piece of fabric to another you don't have to back stitch but it's it's always good practice to anchor your two pieces together at start and finish so they don't unravel. Okay, I messed up so I had to start over. So what we're going to do is we're going to now anchor this seam allowance to the main with a top stitch. Um, I didn't do a very good job so I have to have to start over. Um, and unfortunately, that side doesn't like to get as close as this side. So I'm going to come over to this side again. You probably won't have to do that with your machine because, again, you are not moving your needle like I have to. I have to because I'm working on a scale. And I'm going to repeat that several times so you don't end up following the same. You know, do as I say, not as I do, um, as, as that adage goes. Okay, so... You've got this this one done. Time to do this one. Um, so here we go. That top stitch is way too high. 
And again, you don't have to top stitch because we are adding another piece of fabric on top of that in just a moment. And when you're not careful, when you do a back stitch in your top stitching, is that when you have your finished product, you'll be able to see that bit of back stitching. All right, now we have the front of our pocket. This is just one layer, not a good, you know, it's not really good for the longevity because anything going into that pocket, it's going to be rubbing against all that stuff. And none of this is finished. So we don't want, we don't want that getting rubbed and then having all this fray and everything coming apart. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it, we're going to keep it right side up and we are going to add our second layer, our interior pocket face. Because this is solid, I can just lay it right on top, just like that. We're gonna turn it sideways. And now what we're going to do is we are going to sew and anchor these two together at a half an inch. So this you'll line up with your half inch mark on your sewing machine and then you'll anchor, so you're gonna backstitch, because we need it to stay and not come undone. There we have that. And now we've got it. Pardon my poor, uh, the, the, usually I sew much straighter than this, but. Um, so then, we keeping this, the, the seam allowance right there. We give it a nice iron or finger press so that when we go to fold it over, the front follows. And all we got to do is get a little finger press. And then we've got that pocket right there. All right. So now because we don't want it pillowy and we don't want it to, you know, be weird when we're reaching in and out of our pocket. What we're going to do is we're going to give a quarter inch top stitch. Okay. And so again, what we're just, we're just going to follow this edge as best we can. This side. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. We don't backstitch because we're not needing to anchor it. We're just having it be a decorative but still functional, functional uh, stitching. All right, so there we go. So right now, we've got our front and our back anchored together. Your pieces of fabric will hopefully be a little better uh, cut mine were not cut i just kind of cut them willy-nilly but you get the idea so now that we have our pocket we need to actually uh, make the rest of the favor and by doing that what we do is we take our long pieces okay and it doesn't matter which direction your pocket goes unless you are adding a tag. I add a tag that says my shop name and all that. But uh, if you're just making yourself a pocket, it does not matter which direction you lay your pocket on. And you'll, you'll see why in just a, in, in a step or two. So you're just, you're going to put your pocket there. You're gonna line it up with the bottom and the sides. Again, I didn't do a very good job with cutting my pieces, so they're a little bit off. Yours hopefully won't be if you cut it to the dimensions that I did. You'll be fine. All right. So now we have this. What you're going to do then is layer your last piece on top, paying attention to lining up everything as best you can. You're going to probably want some pins or some clips. I like to use clips, but you should probably use pins 
All right, now that we have it all pinned, we are ready to start sewing. And this is where you have to do a little decision making. So either you start like an inch away from center at the top or about an inch and a half down, or sorry, not an inch and a half down. So either you start, so either you start at an inch from center. So if here is center, I'll put my finger right on center and you start an inch over here and sew all the way around, or you start about three inches down from the top corner. And that's what I like to do because I usually sew a tag right in here. So I, I, when I'm finished, I like to come over and completely sew in that tag. But if I leave it open, it gets a little weird. So start about two and a half to three inches down from your top corner, half an inch. So we're pretty much always going to be sewing on half an inch for anything that I do anyway. Um, and we're going to do a little back stitch and then we're just going to sew all the way around you want so your project is going to look like this hopefully the entire way around mine sticks out a little so we're gonna we're gonna ignore some of this excess just a little bit as we sew but we're gonna go ahead and sew all the way around I'm going to pull out my pen so that I don't, one, sew over it, and two, um, the fabric lays a little flatter. I've stopped because we're getting to a pivot point. And for a lot of new sewists, they can be really scary because you might run right off of this corner. So when you get close to your corner, your pivot point, you're going to just manually turn your machine until you get roughly half an inch to the edge. See, when you turn it, it's not half inch. You may have to do a half turn, manipulate. See, I just pulled it back just a little bit. So you'll have a half stitch there so that when you turn it, it lines up with your seam allowance measurement. Mine is roughly a quarter inch because I'm doing to scale yours should be roughly half inch and you'll keep sewing again we're getting close to that pivot point I'm not gonna make a full stitch I'm gonna keep my needle up just a little so that I can pull the fabric plant my needle lift and pivot uh, there we go and now we just sew like we would normally. We keep going. We got a pivot point. I think that one is actually pretty good. Nope. Nope. So we're going to bring it down. But see, that's too far. So I want to back it up just a little. Put a little half stitch in there turn and pivot. Now if it's a little off that's fine. Um, you're just starting. It doesn't have to be perfect. But here we go. We're gonna manually approach this corner. Pretty sure it's too much. So I'm gonna put a little, I think it's a, it'll be end up being a quarter stitch in there. So I'm gonna just back it up just a little. Plant my needle turn and pivot. Now, you're not going to close this section because we need to turn this whole thing right side out. But we still want to sew in that corner so that we have structure to work with in a later step. All right. We're just going to do, you, you want to leave yourself about an inch to two inches, uh, maybe an inch and a half. Inch and a half tends to work really well. Uh, depending on the size of your fingers, you might need a little more. If you've got a little stick you can use to help you guide the fabric out that little hole, great. So we're going to just make sure that we give ourselves enough room. 
and then we back stitch because we don't want it coming undone as we manipulate all of this fabric through that little hole all right we're all done with that we're going to pull it off of the machine we're going to give our threads a little clip so they don't get in our way okay we don't have to worry about all this i'm just going to clean mine up because i didn't do a very good job in making my pieces and I don't want that extra bulk because I'm going forward All right so now a crucial part to turning things right side out is knowing how your excess is going to behave for me that excess is the corners or are the corners these are going to, when they are turned right side out, they're going to fold in on each other. And you see how already you can tell you've got all that excess right there. So that's what it'll be doing when you turn this thing right side out. You don't want all this excess. So you're going to snip away that excess. And I like to get close, but not too close to that seam because you don't want the th the stitching to pull through when you go to point uh, poke out the corner but you don't want all this excess and you even want to do it to this area it'll make it a little weird but you'll be fine and there we go. We've got all our corners clipped so that excess isn't going to be getting in the way. Uh, uh, unlike these bits. And now what's left to do is to turn it right side out and do some finishing touches. Okay. With a full sized favor, you're going to be able to stick your finger in, scrunch all of this up till you get to a corner, pinch your thumb in it, and then pull it up so that the what's covering your thumb pokes out the hole and then you can just pinch it with your other hand and maneuver it through unfortunately mine is to not to scale so i have to get a little bit creative i'm just going to find a spot where i can sort of start the turning right side out and i'm and try and get towards that that opening as best I can now this is a little more difficult for me again because I'm not doing this to scale so I've got to fight very the same thickness but much smaller uh, area to work with so if I can do this you're just going to gently, you don't want to be rough with this, you just want to gently coax the fabric out of itself. There we go. And it's, it's going to look like this. And so what you'll need to do now is to find a chopstick. I have a point turner. It won't work for this because, again, we're... I'm working on the very small scale here. And you're going to use that point turner to get your points all turned out. Now you can see mine is not facing the right way. And this is where I said it doesn't matter which direction you make this because your fabric is a solid with a print vanity stripe so you just turn your pocket right around do your best to point those those uh, corners out and this is why we clipped makes it a lot easier okay Mine aren't going to point very well because it's bulky and, and small, but that's okay. And there we go. We've got our pocket pulled out. 
Now, you could leave it like this if you like. I don't. I finish my edges and it's going to look a little different because my I'm not to scale. So my top stitching is not going to look as good as your top stitching for that for that fact. But what we're going to do, what I like to do, is I like to press my seams forward, which means rolling it so it's not like it's not like this. You want to have it expressed. So everything comes to the front. It's nice and flat. So that when you sew, you are giving yourself as much room as you can. Now, we have an opening here. Let's see if I can. And what I like to do is I sew at a quarter inch along top stitching. Seams I do at half inch, uh, but um, seams I do at half inch, top stitching I do at quarter inch. So I'm going to start all the way at the top here. I'm going to go, I'm going to back stitch. You don't have to, but I do. But here's the thing we have an opening. I personally don't like having that opening flappy when we are done. So if we do a quarter inch seam allowance, the seam will be right here, or the, sorry, the top stitching. If we do a quarter inch top stitch, our top stitch will be right here, meaning that that opening will still have room to flippy flap. I don't like that. That's my personal thing. So you can do what I do and you can Sew down to the start of that opening, pivot a little, hand stitch to the very edge. So if you look, we're at the very edge there. There's not much to the side. But we're now really close to that edge. That uh, opening is going to be nice and closed. And if you didn't do your opening too far down it won't show and then once we get to the end of it we do the same thing we hand stitch until we get about a quarter of an inch in and then we continue sewing now this is going to be the part where my stitches were a little big so it's bowing out uh this will be the part that might be a little difficult for your machine so be patient with your machine. You may have to do this part by hand, but we're going to tack this, all this down, and it's awfully bulky. Most machines don't like it. So when we get close to it, we're going to plant our needle, make sure that the pocket isn't being squished down. We're going to lift it, lift our presser foot to relieve any bunching, and then we're going to hand crank right over and then we are going to back stitch right off that pocket top. And then we're going to keep going, okay? That's going to secure, make that a, a, a less of a stressful point at the side and just that top stitch. And we're going to keep going. And we're going to approach that corner nice and slow. We're going to hand, hand turn lift our presser foot pivot with a needle that is through the fabric and i say that because if the needle is up you might shift where the pocket is and the top stitch will look a little weird um, it's okay if you do that but always when you're manipulating your material always have the needle in the material as far down as you can before it starts raising back up okay and then we're just going to keep going going mine's gonna look ugly but that's okay because it's just a teeny tiny thing all right here we go okay again we're going oh see my machine's not like this thing we're gonna go right through and then we're gonna back stitch 
See, my machine's suffering. You can see it's barely moving right now, and it should be moving a lot more. That's okay. I have another machine that I normally do this on that uh, allows me to go through thicker material. This machine doesn't like it. And you may find that your machine doesn't. So using thinner materials will probably be good. Kona's a little bit thicker than the quilting cotton. Um, so your machine may like you to use all quilting cotton. You can get a solid uh, quilting cotton just fine. Um, but I like Kona, so my machine is suffering. I probably need a new needle. But anyway, we did a little back stitch. And now we keep going. Oh, I've lost my thread. To be fair, uh, as a fair warning, I'm suffering because I actually dropped my machine just before making this video. Uh, and I am suffering the consequences of not checking the issues before. All right, so now we have our back stitch, and we're going to keep going. So we're just going to sew all the way to the end. We're going to back stitch don't have to I always backstitch uh, that's just I like to ensure that my stitching will not come undone and backstitching is the best way to ensure stitching does not come undone okay so now the last step is making the belt loop okay we've got our pocket got our pocket we've enclosed our our opening you see it doesn't really open because we've closed it nice and close and now what we do is we fold over our pocket at about four inches so this should be four inches and what we're going to do is going to be the most difficult part for a lot of people and that is blind sewing you're not going to be able to see where you are sewing except for the start so you're going to take this this edge and you're going to make sure that it is a quarter inch or as close to the edge of this presser foot as you can and what i do is this is the only time that you will be following the instructions when i say move the needle you're going to move the needle of your machine all the way to the left okay and you're going to you're going to be able to feel this edge right here you're going to line it up as best you can with your presser foot and you can start in a little more because i always start a little bit forward back stitch because we are anchoring one piece to another okay this this is a vital time to back stitch okay here is our edge i like to continue to use my fingers to guide so normally I've got a big piece of fabric here. I use my fingers to guide my fabric to ensure that this stays right in place. But this time I've got a line here to help me. So I've got a back stitch. I like to do it a couple times just to make sure. And then we're going to continue to sew. So back stitch. And we pull it off. If all went well we should have captured the entire length of our pocket or our belt loop so there we have it it's a little skewed it tends to happen i didn't exactly ensure both sides were even i have a ruler that i use i sit, uh, sit the ruler here and it helps keep both sides straight but you now have a finished pocket okay and now i have like a pocket for a doll but by do it, folding it over four inches and following that edge, you end up giving yourself three and three quarter inch to fit most rings that people tend to use. Uh, you, can, you can just slip your ring in if you want it on close to where you have your the start of your belt, or you can slip it on at the end with the tail and you're good to go. But now you have a pocket. And that is my method of doing belt pockets. Again. My name is Silenus. Thanks for coming to this video. Give it a like, share it with your friends, uh, and make yourself a bunch of pockets because you never have enough pockets uh, in life or in AmpGuard.